Welcome to The Morning How, the only morning talk show that loves you, with your hosts, Vincent Rendon and Bethany Haspel. Good morning to all our lovely viewers. I'm Vincent Rendon. And I'm Bethany Haspel. Our first story for today, scientists in Sweden working on a cure for the coronavirus have made a breakthrough. Researchers at the IKEA Medical Development Center in Stockholm say that their experimental COVID-19 treatment is ready to enter the testing phase, but that they are still having some trouble scaling up production. A new drug, the King of Horfin, is actually working super well, but at the factories, uh, they're having a hard time reading our diagrams. Experts say the Swedish drug could be available much sooner than the one being developed by West Elm's Medical Research Division, which is still having trouble figuring out how to make a cure that only works on rich people. Others across the country have been learning to adapt to their children attending school from home. Now, some brave moms are fighting back. Karen Potts was trying to enjoy her morning coffee yoga when her six-year-old son interrupted her asking for the Wi-Fi password. We talked with Karen to find out how she handled the situation. I was just drinking my coffee in Downward Dog when Timmy came in whining about how he couldn't connect to school, and if he couldn't connect to school, his teacher was going to fail him. I just about had it. Here we are with essential workers working every day to help maintain our quality of life while I stay home and live off of my substantial savings. And Timmy's whining about the Wi-Fi not working. So I got a group of my mom friends together and we booked a group plane ticket for a really cheap price, I might add, um, and sent our kids to Burkina Faso, where they are now working in the diamond mines. Everything is so much quieter and more peaceful around the house. Truly inspiring stuff. Thank you, Karen. Our next story involves the tragic wildfires occurring on the West Coast and one community who lost everything. Coldsville, California. It's the nation's most southern igloo community lying just 30 miles south of Sacramento. One week ago, wildfires broke out on the outskirts of the city. The fire ravaged through the city, displacing thousands as residents watched their homes melt into puddles. According to the mayor, Coldsville is now the 10th largest man-made lake. But residents are petitioning for funds to freeze the water and create a communal ice rink hockey center refugee camp. We reached out to the California governor who said, no dice, no ice. That's enough news for now. Let's go to Stephen with the weather. Good morning. I'm Stephen. Today we'll be discussing whether or not... Wait, no, it's just the weather. Today we'll be discussing the weather. You know, this week we'll, we will be mostly in the 70s. And now that's 70 degrees. Not the decade, not the greatest decade for movies. You know, The Godfather. The Godfather Part 2. Animal House. You know, comedy comes in threes. All right. Uh... <laughs> You know, back to whether or not, wait, no, just the weather. Uh, the weather is really very nice and good, you know, except there were some wildfires and those spread. Those spread like, well, they spread like wildfire. You remember hearing that fire alarm in high school? Nothing better than it, especially during a quiz. It could have been a drill, some burnt toast, or a teacher on fire. I knew, I knew I was going to ask someone what they got for number eight. I saw that one wildfire was started from a gender reveal party. And I think that's so dumb. Because if you want to do a big reveal, it should be when the baby's being born. Or if I was there and saw that big blue cloud of smoke, I'd be like, cool, where is he? In that fire, it burned over 10,000 acres of land. He's really going to be made fun of in school. He's going to get bullied. They'll be like, uh, you burned down my father's farm. You burned down my father's farm. Hey, at least I helped someone pass a quiz. Thank you, my time's up. Is it just me or is it getting hot in here? Up next on The Morning Howl, Cooking with Kendall Waltz. Hi, I'm Kendall and today I'm gonna to be making Oregon Trail pancakes in loving memory of my great, great, great grandfather who was on the Oregon Trail. I'm gonna start by taking my dry ingredients and mixing it with my wet. Uh, my great, great grandfather talking about this brings back so many great memories. He was actually killed by cannibalism during the Oregon Trail and his sacrifice brought my family to Oregon and really made me who I am today. 
if I just like to think if he had these pancakes that he would have survived to tell me the tale in person. Instead, he was married at 14 and had a child a year later. Ugh, what an honor. This is actually an eggless pancake mix because did you know that chickens did not come to the US until after 9-11? I couldn't believe it either. Now to make this historically accurate, I'm only adding ingredients that my great great grandfather would have had. So I wanna add some mini chocolate chips. I have regular chocolate chips didn't come until a long time after. So that's why we're only gonna go with, with minis today. All right. Now I'm gonna get one last mix and then I'm gonna put it right on the pan and we're ready to start cooking. I like to think that if I had the ability to time travel that I would go back to meet my great great grandfather at the Oregon Trail and give him this pancake and save him and his clan. Oh, that is the only thing I would do if I could time travel. You're gonna know it's time to flip when those little bubbles pop up to the top, just like the Hudson River. And there we have it, the perfect eggless Oregon Trail pancake in loving memory of my great, great, grand, great grandfather. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because coming up next, Pop Culture News with Cameron Larson. Good evening. Thanks, Vince. Yes, today we're gonna be talking about something fascinating. World War Three Maymays. Now, I know what you're thinking. World War Three Maymays, what could he possibly be talking about? Well, I have a little example sketched out here on my little notepad. Did a little bit of research. Uh, let's see here. Where the hell did that go? Right here. Now. Now. Sorry. I, sorry, guys. I'm still getting used to this whole thing, you know, being in the, the COVID-esque times and everything. But right here you will see what the kids are calling a World War III meme. So the structure is pretty simple. You got top text, sometimes you have bottom text, but not always. Uh, and the top text for this meme that I've created uh, is World War III be like. Now I know, I know, it's it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, I'm still working on it, you know, but they, uh, they'll take something like this, you know, they take a, a hard circumstance like concerns about World War III and they will turn it into something funny. You know, this generation, it's just, it's inspiring to see this generation be as funny as it is. And, you know, they're doing something else. Down in Area 51, they're taking on this, the they're taking on the complex, the Area 51, like the literal building there. They're gonna raid it. And I know what you're thinking, that sounds pretty crazy, right? Well. See, right below my meme here, I have a little diagram. What they've been doing is developing this uh, this sort of run. I think it's called an uh, an an I me uh, run, where you jut your arms out in this V behind you and you sprint through the desert at full speed. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up and try it. There you go. Am I yeah, doing no, it? Yeah, no, exactly. That's how you do it. Perfect. I think you guys have it down. Excellent form. Now. For next week, in the old May May world, I will be covering a strange new trend, something having to do with WAP. Back to you guys, thank you. Spirit of Halloween is filing for bankruptcy after record low sales in their first week of October operations. Representatives from Spirit Halloween told Morning Howl that the Spirit purchased 400,000 sexy police officer costumes in January, but has yet to sell any for reasons they say are unexplainable. That's our show for today. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Vincent Rendon. And I'm Bethany Haspel. Blessed be the morning wolves.